Everybody ought to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Be your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Oh, hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Be your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God. Changing hand. I am on the battlefield. For my Lord, I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I am. I promised him that I would serve him until I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Ooh, I once was lost in Idom. I was a sinner too. I heard a voice from heaven said, There is what to do. I took my master's hand. Then I joined the Christian band. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I lost my flag in battle. The staff was in my hand. Gonna take it home to Jesus over in that promised land. I know. The sun will shine on this old soul of mine, on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on. This is still the wake period. I just thought we would come in and try to give it a little better atmosphere. And as you come, you can still view. And when, as the service commenced, the casket will remain open because we are streaming live. Ladies and gentlemen, if you will do me a favor, turn your phones and things of that nature down to silent or vibrate. Do that for us because we don't want to be rude to the family. It is their turn now. It could be our turn in a matter of minutes. Amen? Amen. I'm going to serve him until I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land where I'm bound. Come and go. I got to hold my head up. I'm going home with the Lord. Yes, my mind is made up. I'm on my way up. I got to hold my head up. I'm going home with the Lord. 
troubles in my way <laughs> I cry sometimes I got trouble Make me cry sometimes Oh, I lay awake at night But that's all right I know Jesus will fix it After a while my mind is made up I'm on my way Gotta hold my head up I'm going home with the Lord Heaven is my goal Every day Lord, I keep on moving In the right way mm, If I stumble Yeah Step aside I don't want Stumbling over me, my mind is made up. I'm on my way up. Got to hold my head up. I'm going home with the Lord.
Let every heart say amen. Come on, say amen again. Say amen one more time. The Lord has been good to you. Come on, clap your hands and let's give him some glory. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Look at somebody you're sitting by. Go ahead and look at them. You ain't going to catch nothing for looking at them. Go look at them and say, neighbor, I love you. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Tell them again like they owe you some money now. Say, neighbor, I love you. <laughs> and ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> One more time, y'all, let's clap our hands and give God some glory. My name is Bernard Clark. I pastor the Prince of Peace Missionary Baptist Church here on the west side of Chicago, 5450 West on Van Buren, right on the corner of Van Buren and Lotus, organized by the late Dr. W.L. Loveshire. Amen? And today I come to be of an assistance to this family, saying to you that God is able to do anything except fail. Amen? Uh, he's an on-time God, isn't he? Anybody know he's an on-time God? Has he ever showed up for anybody in here? Has he ever made a way for anybody in here? I know he's on time. My grandmama said he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Amen. Our service is about to commence, and it's all right. Let, let, her, let, her, let, her, let her have it. It's all right. All right. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Amen. Bless you. We are <clears throat> in a day now where so much is happening. So much is going on. Just yesterday we lost another giant here on the west side the Reverend Clifford Spears, the pastor of the St. Michael Baptist Church, there at Monroe and Keela, right in the 4200 block, I think that is, of Monroe. The Reverend Clifford Spears, the Lord called him home on yesterday. And can I tell y'all, that could have been you or I. But one day our day is coming. And so it behooves all of us to get ready. Somebody say, get ready. My grandmama used to say, get your house in order. Huh? And when I was a kid, I thought that meant go home and clean up. <laughs> huh? But as I grew in Christian education and Sunday school and Baptist training and all that good stuff, it simply meant to get your heart right and get your life right. Amen? Because sooner or later, our day is coming. You notice on obituaries, you see the time that people come in and there's a dash and then the time that they leave. It's not about when they come or go, but it's about what they do with that little bit in the middle. The dash isn't long, is it? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Come on, talk to me. That dash ain't long, is it? Huh? It's short. James says it like this in the Bible. He says, life is like a vapor. It appears for a little while and then vanishes away. All of us are like uh, perishable items in a grocery store. Everybody got an expiration date on you. You just don't know when. The Bible says that no man knows the day nor the hour that the Son of Man shall appear. God is good. I got a witness in here. You ain't got to be quiet about it. God is good. And all the time, amen. In the Old Testament, Job 14 says, man that is born of a woman is of a few days. And those days are full of trouble. Coming forth like a flower and is cut down. Flee also as a shadow, but continue not. In the New Testament, St. John chapter 14 says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again 
and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know. And the way ye know, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. We don't even know the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And had you known me, you had also known the Father. God's word is blessed. Shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Gracious God, our Father, we come this afternoon, Lord, to tell you thank you for being good to us. You watched over us all night long, and then early this morning, you woke us up. You gave us another chance to get it right with you, and so we'll stop now to tell you thank you for bringing us to this present time. I pray now that you will show up in this room and walk around in here and touch us all one by one. Somebody here needs you for one thing and somebody else needs you for another. We have the problem, but you're the problem solver. And so we give it to you now, just as your word says. Cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. Move in this room now by your spirit and by your might. Hold this family now, God, and remind them that everything is going to be all right. Let them know that this too shall pass. But then, O oh Lord, keep them in perfect peace as long as they keep their minds stayed on you. For the person that don't know you today, I pray that you will show up in their life and set them crying, what must I do to be saved? I once was lost, but now I'm found. Blind, but now I can see. In the name of Jesus, Christ I pray, amen. Come on, y'all say amen. At this time, let's receive Chris, Christian Webster Macklin. Say amen as she comes. Praise the Lord. I just, I'm just here to encourage you all on today in the family and Shanette, and thank you for allowing me to render the services to you and your family in your time of bereavement. And because I read the obituary, she lived a full life. And so we thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass. Yes, he does. And then he leads me beside the quiet streams. And then he restores my fanning head. And he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe, safe in his arms. Because the Lord is my He rest in the meadows grass of guarantee and then he leads me beside the quiet stream and then he he restores my family camp and he helps me to do what honors him the most that's why I'm safe that's why I'm safe that's why I'm safe, safe in his arms when the storm, oh God, when the storms of life are raging, yes, oh, and the sea. 
Y'all give her another hand. Come on, give her a hand. Don't patty cake her. I almost start singing tenor. God bless you. Thank God that we're safe in the arms of Jesus. Anybody here know who you belong to? Huh? I got a witness in here. I'm glad I got it. People used to say, I'm so glad I found the Lord Jesus in time. I learned that he ain't never been lost. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> you ought to be saying, you're so glad he found you. Huh? Because guess what? He'll meet you right where you are. We often talk about go to church. He said, take the church outside the church. Go into the highways and the hedges. Compel men to come in that his house may be filled. Amen? And I tell you, once you try them, you might like it. I didn't like black eyed peas when I was a little boy, but I had to eat everything on my plate before we got dessert. And then my grandmama caught me one day, and she said, give me the plate, because I was trying to give my peas and stuff to the dog. And uh, she got it and put some more on there, and she said, wait a minute, and she got some cornbread. She put the cornbread on there, and then she got a little sugar, put a little bit of that on there, and then she kind of stirred it together. She said, eat it now. And I be, I've been eating it ever since. Amen. <laughs> Try it, you might like it. Amen. She said, why you don't like these peas, boy? I said, they keep looking at me. <laughs> Amen. But, but I can't wait till Wednesday down at MacArthur because they got beef neck bones and they got black eyed peas. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Some of us feel like that about the Lord. I ain't going to church till I get myself right. Go to church, everybody in there ain't right. Amen? That's why we go. The seniors of the church say, get right church and let's go home. That's why we go. Because we're sick. And I, I guarantee you, once you go in there, it'll make you well. Amen? Psalm 34 and 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Thank you one more time, Miss Macklin, safe in his arms. Amen. Um, I'll kind of, I'm kind of the MC, so I can, I'll handle it. I won't alleviate anything, but I'll just kind of put it in this regard. At this time, we'll have remarks. Uh, remarks simply mean to talk. Ain't that right? Y'all gonna talk to me? I say, y'all gonna talk to me. Remarks simply mean to talk. So when you come for remarks, two things Reverend Clark don't want you to do. Number one, don't sing. <laughs> Amen. Because if they had wanted you to sing, they would have wrote your name right where Miss Macklin name is. Amen. Number two, don't preach. That's why I'm here. Amen. Amen. So. Where I come from, I come by way of Tunica and Belzoni, Mississippi, so y'all don't know nothing about down south. Y'all know anything about down south? They told me, and I tell it everywhere I go, uh, don't burn no bridge that you go across, because you just may have to come back across. I'm simply saying, be careful on how you treat people because you don't know who you're going to need. Amen? And so, brothers and sisters, if you will, uh, if you can't say nothing good, don't say nothing at all. So, the floor is now open for remarks. We'll take about six people, if you will. Would you come real quick if you want to have a remark? Real quick. Don't think about it. Your name ain't on the program, but it's on that now. Come on. God bless you. Amen. Y'all saw this young lady coming? It's about four or five more of y'all that want to be like her. Would you come and just make a line real quick? Amen. God bless you today. Is there anybody else going to join the line? All right, because once we move, I won't stop until the immediate family asks me to stop. We'll go on to the next segment. Amen? God bless you. 
Good morning, everybody. I'm just glad to be here and honor uh, my aunt, Aunt Ida. She was my grandfather, JW's sister, and she's the last one left. And I just thank God that she was in my life for the time she was and all the things she's done. And, you know, she's just such a big family person. I, I think I met like at least 10 of my cousins just in one year alone that I have never, ever met before, and that was through Aunt Ida. So she's always been around family barbecues. She was there. She would come, and sometimes we go to the house, and she would just, I, I just love being around her, and I just thank God that she was here for all of us. She was everybody's aunt. And I'm just grateful that I had the opportunity, and um, I just want to continue to keep her in my memories and uh, just keep all of my family uh, in my prayers, and I just pray that I get to know many more of you guys. So thank you. Hello, first giving honor to the, to the pastors that are here, to friends and family. Um, my name is Katina Shack. Um, Aunt Ida was my auntie too. She was married to my uncle Jr. Um, I want to thank God for allowing my uncle to find such a beautiful woman. I love Aunt Ida. Um, when they stayed right down the street from the fire station, what street was that, Wilcox? I don't know. Wilcox? Oh, I was there every weekend. That was my other mom and dad. I just want to say that Aunt Adam was the sweetest thing I ever know, and I thank God for her. Amen. Good morning, friends. I'm not really a spokesman to talk 
before people, but I'm an action person. If you need me to do something, that's person. I got up to talk about my cousin. We were very, very close. Wherever I went most of the time, she was with me. I say, uh, Ida, let's go to Mississippi. Okay, John. So I pick her up, and here we go. Ida was everything for me, and I was everything for her. I will miss her. In fact, we was together when she got sick. I was there doing a favor for her when she got sick. So then I couldn't believe what they said, what they said about her, because she was a person that loved peoples. I'm a person that helped peoples. So now, I, I, I just can't say a lot of whatever I want to say about it because I'm choking up. So anyway, you all just be like her. Be a follower. Be a leader. Have a good day. Come on, y'all. Clap your hands for everybody, little cup. Now, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in doing things right. Um, a young lady came and informed me of something that I omitted, and I, I would be remiss not to let her do what was asked of her. Miss Maddie Johnson is here, and she's going to come and uh, be and have a few words to say, or just read the scripture, but I want her to know uh, that I would, I would never be rude like that. Amen? At this time, y'all receive Miss Johnson as she comes. Uh, I'm going to say in her own way. Amen.
but he won't uh, somebody in his likeness and image. And he so loved us, he gave his only begotten son. And the son so loved us. Since there was nothing else, no other blood was pure enough to take away the sins of the world. Because, you know, it's some sinful down here in this world. And he was the only one had the blood. Pure enough to wash our sins away. And God knows we have done some sins. But that was the only blood. It was pure enough to wash your sins away. There wasn't so much hope. They say they, they look heaven, earth, and all. They couldn't find nothing worthy to cover the blood of the sin the people had down there. God sent his son. He came down here, suffered for us so we could be saved. That's we are so thankful. There's nobody like Jesus. Nobody. There's no other name under heaven given among me except through Jesus Christ our Lord. Just like to say, he is the way. There's no other way. You can search all through the nations and land, but there's no other way. And we have done so much disobedience and everything. But Jesus came that we would be delivered. We can get forgiven. Because he prayed for us to the Father. He's the only one who can get to the Father. And you can't get to the Father either, except through him. Christ our Lord and Savior. So we just wonder, we see people come and see it, people go. And sometimes we don't understand why people that have heard the word, you heard the word, but you still, but he gave us the freedom to choose. He's a just God and a righteous and a holy God. And he, no matter what you've done, he gave you the privilege to come and repent and turn it around. He will help you turn it around. And I just want to read this little scripture to you so you continue to be encouraged. Sometimes we wonder who's going to make it with all this going on down here. This scripture said, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly. We got to walk upright. And walketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbited not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor take up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that swears to his own hurt, and changes not, so when people hurt you and talk about you and say all oh, men are against you, don't worry about it. Just give it to the Lord. Because he is a faithful God, a merciful God. The Bible tells us his mercy endures forever. Always he's merciful. He that put his, not out his money to usury and take his reward Wait a minute. He that put it not out of his money to use it, nor take it up war against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. You'll never be moved as long as you got Christ in you. You'll never be moved for you said, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. So remember, we have a Savior. And don't forget talk to God. Whatever problem you have, he's the only one to have the answer to whatever you have. God bless you. This, I just read to you uh, uh, Psalm, the 15th dimension of Psalm will tell you whatever the case is, he has the answer because he is the answer. God bless you. Thank you so much, Ms. Johnson. We want to give her another hand, y'all. Come on. Get to know who Jesus is. Amen. At this time, I want to call Miss Macklin back to come and then right after her, am I saying this right, Anissa? All right, Rinderflesh? 
Ren Flesh. Right, Ren Flesh. Okay. She's going to come right after uh, Miss Macklin comes with a solo. She's going to come and read the obituary. And I understood that that was a poem uh, to be read. Uh, will y'all give me the name of the person to read the poem? Thank you so much. I shall wear a crown, crown, I shall wear a crown, when it's all over, oh Lord. When it's all over, I shall see his face. I shall see his coming down to read the obituary. Say amen for her as she comes. Ida Moore was born to Alice Caston and John Wesley McGee on July 8, 1926. She was the seventh of 12 children in Utica, Mississippi. Ida's brothers, Jesse, Ruth, Charles, Vera, Willie, Lucy, J.W., Mary Ella, Sandy, Dessa, 
and her children and her sisters Johnny Legron, XL, Sally Hetty, and Mary Hearn RC, who all preceded her in death. Ida accepted and confessed Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior at an early age at St. John Missionary Baptist Church under the leadership of Pastor Reverend John Anthony and was baptized. Ida sang gospel songs in the choir as well as with a quartet group along with her sisters, brother Willie, and cousins. Ida received her education at Little Rock Grammar School and graduated to the ninth grade. In 1944, Ida moved to Drew, Mississippi, then later moved to Chicago, Illinois in 1947. Ida was joined in holy matrimony to William Moore in 1950, who preceded her in death in 1994. Ida leaves to cherish her memories, a sister, Joyce Tower, Fred, a daughter, Cynthia Harris, granddaughter, Devisha Brooks, and great-granddaughter, Malaysia, grandson, Shalomar Harris, and a host of nieces, nephews, friends, and extended family. I believe Shalomar is the one reading the poem. Okay, Shalomar will be the one reading the poem, Shalomar Harris. Ida attended and finished courses at a practical nurse as a practical nurse in 1956 and worked as a home health care worker. She also attended the National Nursing Training School in Chicago and continued to serve in home health care for several years. Ida also worked at Farm Crest Bakery in Chicago during her early years and then worked at Wilson Jones Company in Niles, Illinois in 1967 for 13 years as a machine operator and retired in 1980. Her life. Ida Moore touched many lives in her lifetime and she will always be remembered for her memory and love of family. She was a walking encyclopedia when it came to the family and knew everyone. She believed in the sanctity of family. If family were in town, she would invite you over to get to know them or pass on their information so that you could be sure to get in and con connect to be sure to connect with them. She also looked forward to the birthday calls each and every year. You could sit down for hours and days if you had the time, and she would tell you stories after stories about your relatives, whether you knew them or not. She would pull out pictures to go along with those stories and took you on an adventure as if you were actually there. It was amazing. You, could, you couldn't help but just shake your head and wonder how could she remember so many people. From the old to the young, she even knew the names of the newest family members. She could pretty much recite her family tree. She would say, you got to know your people. If you didn't know who someone was, all you had to do was get on the phone and call an item. She was old school, and she used phone books. She had a flip phone, but I was told she was upgraded to a smartphone. I can't begin to tell you how many phone books Ida had. I was told she was about to add a couple of more. So I think that's your job, Katrina, to carry that on. <laughs> now, now she would only let you do so much for her because she was an independent woman. If she needed something, you would know about it. One thing we do know about on Ida, she did not sit idle twiddling her thumbs. As you can see from all the pictures, and there were more, but she definitely got around. If there was a will, there was a way. Even she got up, even when she got up in age, she still went to family reunions, barbecues, birthday parties, and other family functions. She loved visiting relatives. She had such a big heart and would rather give than take. Just a generous, kind-hearted, loving, spiritual, and wise woman. When she could no longer go to church, she would open her Bible and read it. In fact, during her last few weeks and days here on earth, she prayed for others by calling out their name. It was a beautiful thing. She also still had a sense of humor up until the last few days. Then she peacefully went to sleep. Sleep on, Ida, sleep on. You would truly be missed. I'm just going to read this short poem that she chose. And Ida was very prepared. She had everything ready. When I say everything, I mean down to the minister and the singer. It's just that the minister was not, was not available, but we tried to follow her wishes as best as we could. 
and she chose this poem a few years ago and gave it to my mom so it can be read when the time came. From Ida, to those I love, when I am gone, just release me, let me go, so I can move into my afterglow. You mustn't tie me down with your tears. Let's be happy that we had so many years. I gave you my love. You can only guess how much you gave me in happiness. I thank you for the love you each have shown, but now it's time I traveled on alone. So grieve for me a while. If grieve you must, then let me grieve. Be, let your grief be comforted with trust. It's only for a while that we must part, so bless the memories within your heart. And then, when you must come this way alone, I'll greet you with a smile and a welcome home. Amen. Clap your hands for one more time. There's a poem to be read. At this time, let us receive this young man as he comes and give us a poem. Represents my grandmother to 110 percent, and at some point in time, most of us uh, come to a point in our lives where we have somebody that means more than us than anybody ever had before. But in my case, I learned how to really love through somebody that used the power of touch, kiss, and hug which is something that's being slowly taken away from us by the CDC or quarantine. We have to stay six feet away from one another. And I was only, I was so lucky to have a grandmother that would, that give me that, that feeling every time I met her, or every time I talked to her on the phone. You all know that grandma, uh, she, if she really is in tune about something you're saying, she'll tell you, you heard, right? Like every conversation, if she say you heard, then she was definitely in tune with what you was about to get ready to say. She loved good news. Not ever did I ever see my grandmother frown, use profanity, any of that. And that transformed, and that cross-reference into my upbringing. I can't imagine living in a world where we're told to stay six feet away from one another, where we can't be close and we can't exhibit hug and touch. But I will always remember grandma's hands. Grandma's hands was powerful. And what I'm about to get ready to say, um, for the golden age individuals, you might understand exactly where I'm going with this. And for the younger generation, just follow suit. But if you know what I'm, but if you can cross-reference what I'm saying, then you can say it with me about how powerful Grandma's hands were. Grandma's hands clapped in church on Sunday morning. Grandma's hands played a tambourine so well. Grandma's hands used to issue out a warning. She'd say, Shalomai, don't you run so fast. Might fall on a piece of glass. 
might be snakes in that grass. Grandma's hands. Grandma's hands used to hand me a piece of candy. Grandma's hands picked me up each time I fell. Grandma's hands, they really came in hand. She say, Cynthia, don't you whoop that boy. <laughs> what you want to spank him for? He didn't drop no apple core. But I don't have grandma anymore. If I get to heaven, I'll look for grandma's hand. I wrote that, by the way. I, I didn't. That was Bill Withers. But every time I hear that song, I think about my grandmother. Um, I also have a poem that I, also, I would like to share. The, uh, one, of, one of my mother's favorites. Um, the Lord spells it all. T is for the time that never stops. H is for the helpful hands that help. E is for the everlasting love and light which I've learned from you, which I leave you all. L is for the love we all share. O is for the occasions we all celebrate. R is for the righteous path I have followed. D is for all the darlings that care. S is for is for the salvation which I shall which I shall keep. P is for the power that stands very tall. E is for the earth which I shall return. L is for the laughter we all cherish. L is for the light that will never go that never goes out. S is for the spirit in which I shall live on. I is for being introduced to you all. T is for thank you and thank you all. A is for the affection that I receive from you all. L is for the long battle that was won. L is for, is for lock that I will always remain secure. What can I say? The Lord spells it all. Once again, I'd like to thank everybody uh, for coming to my grandmother's home, come, home going. And uh, uh, I also want to say one other thing. Uh, as far as the younger generation is concerned, as far as the, the Gen Z or, or uh, Millennials or whatever generation that you that you represent, let us not get to a point where the only time we get to come together and see each other is during a funeral or family reunion. Let us do a better job of coming together consistently so it becomes a habit. Thank you for your time. Come on, y'all, give Brother Shalomar a hand. One of these mornings, it won't be long. You look for me. Walk around, I walk around heaven all day. And when I get to heaven, 
I'm gonna sing and shout. Well, you know. Walk around, we'll walk around heaven all day. in the prefix of this and I asked you to look at somebody and tell them I love you and ain't nothing you can do about it. Let's try it again because that was for the possible. Come on. Look at somebody and tell them say I love you and ain't nothing you can do about it. Now how many of y'all love Miss Moore? All right. You're here out of love. Is that right? Now, I've been preaching about 30 years now, and I've been pastoring the church full time for about 15 of those 30. And I've noticed that in funeral settings, there are a lot of people who come to the funeral, they don't come for the family. They come to see who's going to be there. Can I borrow about nine amens and about ten go-ahead preachers? I, I promise I'll leave y'all alone. I'll be like Elizabeth Taylor was with her fifth husband. She didn't keep him too long. And so if y'all just say amen just for a little while, I promise I'll be done. When we look on obituaries, that word eulogy doesn't mean preach. Amen. That word simply means to speak well of or to tell of one's good. You got up during remark time. You got up and you talked about Miss Moore and how she was and things of that nature. You eulogized her. I didn't know her, but I do know Jesus. Anybody know him? Now, I can eulogize him all day, but I ain't going to do that because I don't want to make y'all glad two times. Amen. You glad to see me come and glad to see me go. Amen. But love is what we need. 
taken uh, from me myself. I'm an only child. No sisters, no brothers. I tell it all the time. It's kind of a testament because I want to encourage somebody that when everybody that's close to you is gone, there's somebody named Jesus. Y'all know him. I got a witness. I holler at you. Amen. Anybody here know who I'm talking about? My grandmama said he's bread when you're hungry, water when you're thirsty. He's a friend when you get lonely. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? He may not come when you want him, but he's always on. He's an on time. Dottie people said that he's an on time God. Uh, let me give you a scripture because some of y'all was waiting on that. I know y'all was waiting on your scripture. John chapter 3, verse number 16. Only one verse, just one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Just for about three more black minutes of your time. That's about six minutes, amen? Uh, I'm going to try to keep it at three. If you say amen, I promise I'll try to be done. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. In that one verse, I want to pull out three things. Number one, God is the world's greatest being. Number two, love is the world's greatest quality. Number three, Jesus is the world's greatest gift. He's better to you than you could be to your own self. A blues writer wrote a song the other day. He said, ain't no love in the heart of the city. I know some of y'all heard I heard y'all back there now. Y'all, mm, yeah. I seen y'all, mm, yeah. Huh? Watch this, y'all. That song was written 50 years ago. Huh? But it's prevalent today. I asked y'all about down south and speaking to people and treating people right. Go down there, they don't know you. Ride up the block, they'll do like this. And if you come back up there and they're still sitting there, they'll do it again. And here it is, we live next door to each other and won't even speak. You, you, you mess around and put a new gutter around your house and a few shingles across the front, and now you don't speak no more. But how many of you can remember back in the day uh, when neighbors could raise your children? I come from a house where you couldn't call old people a lie. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I come from a block where Miss Johnson could sit in the window and tell about everything that happened. You would never see her, but she knew about everything. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? You be doing stuff you ain't got no business, she'll lean out that window. Oh, I can't wait till your mama get home. We got neighborhood watch. We knew who neighborhood watch was. Amen. It was more love back then. I, I want to be as minute as possible. I, I don't want to go too far where we all drown, but let's say well, we can tread this water together. Can we do it together? When I was a little boy, uh, my mama and, and our neighbors would come. We would go back and forth. Go next door and tell Miss Jones, send me a cup of sugar. Give me a little washing powder till I go to the store. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And nowadays, God that gave us this Section 8 voucher. <laughs> took us out the neighborhood, put us in the suburb where we got to catch four buses to get back to where we come from. And now we don't use the front door no more. We just go in the little one garage, get in, get out, come back in, don't speak, and be talking about where we come from. I ain't never going back there. Don't you burn no bridge. Huh? You move out, now you got to tell your, your kid, don't answer that door, look in the, tell me who it is. Don't lose your flavor. Many different kinds of love. Y'all sit there long enough, here I come. Number one, God is the world's greatest being. Muhammad Ali said that he was great. He said that he was the world's greatest, but then he died. And when he died, he couldn't even speak for his own self. 
that lets me know that he's not the world's greatest. Y'all know R. Kelly. I see some hip hop was in the room. I see some young ones. He said that he was the stars up in the sky, mountain way up high. Hey, I made it. I'm the world's greatest. But y'all know he got a little trouble around here. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And so, if he was the world's greatest, he would have spoke to the judge and said to the judge, I'm R. Kelly, Robert Kelly. I'm the world's greatest. Adjourn the court. But guess what? He's right downtown. And that lets me know that he's not the world's greatest. Somebody say, God is. Say it again, God is. God is the world. If my mind served me correct, got a few years of Moody and Chicago Baptist Institute in me, so if my mind serves me correct, Genesis chapter 1 says God is the world's greatest. How do you know? Genesis chapter 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. God moved on the face of the water and said, Let there be that's great, ain't it? Anybody who can stand on nothing and lean on nowhere and say, let there, and it comes in. I wish I had five of y'all who knew what I was talking about. Uh-huh. Somebody, I wish, can I get five of y'all to shout, I'll be number six. God is great. And he's greatly to be praised. I get myself ready for Sunday morning. Look like y'all want to hear some church. Number one, he's the world's greatest being. He's the only doctor that I know that can put you to sleep and don't need anesthesia. He's the only surgeon that I know that can open you up and don't need a scalpel and close you up without you. Let me see if I can paint this picture a little bit better for you. Genesis chapter number two says that he causes man to fall into a deep sleep. It don't say he put a mask on him, didn't put nothing in his arm to make him. He just said he caused him. To fall into a deep sleep, take his hand, stick it into the side of man, pull out a rib, form these pretty faces that we see in him now. Wake up, Adam, and say, what shall we call her? He said, call a woman because she's bone of my bone flesh of my, I was telling y'all, shout, God is great. Watch this, he's so great until you laid down last night and, and whatever you was doing, you probably was watching TV a little while and then after a while the TV started watching you. You went to sleep. You don't know how you did it. But what happened was God caused you to go into an unconscious state. We call it coma. Huh? Not knowing, comatose. Not knowing, watch this. Your lungs are still inhaling and exhaling. But you're unconscious. Sound like that don't go together. Huh? Because if you're unconscious, nine times out of ten, you're dead or knocked out. But you got a pulse, and they got to hit you back and get you back. But watch this. God don't do that. He allows you to slip off and then come back. That's love, ain't it? Let me tell everybody in here. Everybody in here today, when you got up today, your name was on two lists. And God had the list going down the road. It was called stay asleep or wake up. Aren't you glad you were on the wake-up list? Somebody here missed that. He didn't have to, but he did it because he loved you. Now touch yourself and say, Self, if nobody else loves me, God loves me. You know, there are a lot of people who say they love you momentarily. They love you for what you can do for them. And then when you can't do no more, they don't, you know, they like that song, You abandon me. Love don't live here. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. God is the world's greatest being. Love is the world's greatest quality. Scripture says, for God so loved the world. Love, action word, four letter word, L-O-V-E. In Webster's Dictionary, it says that it's an effectual feeling that one portrays for another. But in the Bible, it says God is love. The, the definition to love is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, he says you can have money, but if you ain't got love, you ain't got nothing. At the end of the chapter, he says, I leave three things with you, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. 
We have heard of many different kinds of love. You know, connubial love or love at first sight where two people see each other and immediately they fall in love. But then they spend about four nights together that fifth night, you know, I don't like you no more. Can I tell you God's love is not like that? We have heard of something called narcissistic love. <clears throat> Taken from a character in Greek mythology named Narcissus. One day he looked in the mirror and fell in love with himself. Now I'm not going to stay there too long because I don't want y'all to jump on me. The police station right across the street. There are some people you know that are stuck on themselves. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I I'm a man and I know I'm a man. Oh man, help me Lord Jesus. And, and sometimes I speak to ladies and they be like, they frown up and you know it takes more to be mad than to do to be happy you use more muscles frowning up than you do smiling huh it's just nice to be nice say hi sometime it'll make you feel better don't be stuck up because God ain't stuck up he loves you when you're right and when you're wrong. Y'all ain't saying nothing now. I'll back it up again. He loves you when you don't love yourself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God is the world's greatest being. Love is the world's greatest quality. Jesus, somebody shout that. Say it again. Say it one more time. Do y'all really know him? That was two of y'all, thank you. I said, do y'all know him? Who woke you up this morning? Who got a roof over your head? He's the world's greatest gift. He's better than rubies, diamonds, silver, Gold. He's better than Cadillac, Mercedes, Tesla, Audi. He's better than Fendi, Gucci. Uh, what, what else? Don't you go Obama. He's, he's better to you than you could be to your own self. He's the world's greatest gift. Come down through 40 and two generations. Stopped off at a little place called Bethlehem of Judea. He saw us in a messed up state. Stayed here 33 years and one Friday they put a cross on his shoulder. They don't tell this story no more. But I'm going to tell it and I'm going to get on out of here. He loved me so much y'all and tell. He took that cross and all night Friday they began to whip him. And when they were whipping him, they marched him up the Via Della Rosa. You know it as Mountain Call Calvary. Mm. And they beat my Lord all night long. Y'all, uh, and uh, they stuck 72 thorns around his brow and uh, nailed him in his hands. Yes, they did. And uh, stuck a sword in his side. Mm. And uh, put his body in another man's grave. Y'all know what happened. Uh, he stayed there all night Friday. <laughs> We'll just give God a wave, my friend. When I shout early Sunday morning, he got up from the grave. All power. Come on, directors. It was in his hand. Can I tell y'all that's enough, Julius? Can I tell y'all something real quick? He died for you. But guess what else? He got up for you. Somebody ought to tell him thank you. He loves you. He loved me too. I was tore up from the floor. Needed a record, a checkup from the neck up. 
but he loved me so much until he reached way down. He picked me up, turned me off, dusted me off, and sent me back to go tell somebody that can't nobody do him like Jesus can. Amen? Seek him while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. I will not transition on. I'd like to do a formal committal, after which uh, we can move further. Mr. Macklin, if you will.
anybody ask you oh oh where i'm going oh, oh, oh where i am going oh soon oh, if you want to know where i'm going where May I have three young ladies, please? Can I have three ladies to bear flowers? Four? May I have four ladies, please, to bear flowers for us, please? Four ladies who will bear flowers. Okie dokie. Thank you. I need four ladies, if possible. Well, three more now. I have one. I need three more who will come and bear flowers for us, please. Oh! 